back. If you've just joined us, you're watching the news at 10 on Channel's television. A reminder of our top stories. No breakthrough yet after over eight hours of talks in Abuja to resolve industrial dispute between federal government and striking resident doctors. Non-teaching staff unions of government-owned universities announced plans to embark on indefinite strike on September the 11th. Another Nigerian is tortured to death, allegedly by the South African police in Johannesburg, the second in a week in that country. And Hurricane Irma wreaks havoc as it makes landfall in the French island territories in the Caribbean. Now, for more on our top stories and others, please visit our website, channelstv.com and youtube.com forward slash channels web. Also, please log on to m.channelstv.com to watch us on your mobile device or download the Channels TV app for Android, iOS and Windows devices from their respective stores. The Channels TV and Channels 24 app will give you access to news and updates. You'll also have access to the eyewitness feature with which you can share those pictures videos or news of happenings around you. Just install the app, then tap and swipe to reveal the menu and follow the instructions. Now here are some of the pictures you sent to our eyewitness portal today. Our first photo tonight shows the frightening state of Ubaho Community Road in the Kano East local government area of Enugu State. Our eyewitness reporter laments poor government attention on this agrarian community and is soliciting help in order to save the people the pains they've had to put up with. The state of an alleged only industrial road neglected in Amuwa Dauphin local government area caught the attention of our next eyewitness reporter who claims Alakusa Road deserves more than it's currently being given. Our eyewitness reporter is calling on the Lagos state government to come to the aid of the residents and road users. Our next snapshot is that of a bust pipe in Bagini Bado. Our eyewitness is disturbed by the sheer waste of water and calls for the protection of public utilities. Finally, is this video of the poor state of Lawanson Road in Suruleri. Our eyewitness says motorists now dread the portion of the road due to potholes infestation. And it's calling on the Lagos State Public Works Department to do a quick work on the road. Well, thank you for sending in those pictures. Please note that you too can report events as they happen around you. President Mohamed Buhari today arrived in Abuja after spending the Idel Kabir holidays in Daura Katsina State. While in Daura, the president played host to several groups, including core members serving in Katsina State, where he reiterated the need to sustain the country's unity. On Monday, the president met with the president of Niger Republic, Mohamedou Isufu, and the two leaders met behind closed doors. The weekly Federal Executive Council meeting had been called off over what the Minister of Information and Culture, Al Haji Lai Mohammed, said was the inability of ministers to adequately prepare the documents for the meeting. The federal government will begin the dredging of the River Benue as a temporary measure to avert a reoccurrence of the flooding that submerged more than 2,000 houses in the state capital. Vice President Professor Yami Oshibaja, while meeting with victims of the flood today in Makodi, says government will also construct drainage systems to avert a repeat of the havoc. The Vice President's official jet arriving the Makodi airport. The host team, headed by the Benue State Governor Samuel Otom, was already waiting to receive the federal government delegate. <laughs> Professor Yemio Shibajo is accompanied by the Minister of Works, Power and Housing, Mr. Babatsune Fashala, and the Minister of Agriculture and Rural Development, Chief Audu Obe. <laughs> They are in Benue State at the instance of President Muhammad Buhari, first to check the well-being of the victims of the flood and then to also proffer lasting solutions to the hydro-headed problem of flooding, which has been a cause of worry to the people for many years. The victims of the flood who are now seeking shelter at an IDP camp set up by the state government had been waiting anxiously for the vice president and his team to make their demands known. We have 
problem in Makodi here. Most especially that of the drainages. We don't have enough drainages in Makodi. So when the water comes, it flows. Like now that I'm telling you, my house is collapsed. But the vice president tells them that the federal government is more concerned about solving the flood problems permanently rather than just providing a temporary solution. Professor Shibajo and his team therefore identified the need to dredge the river Benue. We must do something about the Benue River. There must be effective dredging. We must begin that process because uh, the Benue River, as you know, has practically over 40 years or so, um, you know, has hardly ever been dredged. So that's a major problem. And then canalization, providing drainage and all of that is also another very important issue. After calming all frayed nerves, the vice president and his team headed for some of the areas worst hit by the flood. They also inspected some of the relief materials supplied by government to alleviate the sufferings of the victims. Because the vice president is here, we believe that Mr. President is committed to seeing that we put an end to this. And uh, we believe what Mr. Vice President has said. More than 2,000 houses were submerged in the flooding that swept many communities in Benue State, and victims seeking shelter here can only stay for a while as they continue to hope that some of the promises made by the government will be implemented as soon as possible. The debate over the best system of government for Nigeria has been dominating the Nigerian polity for some time now, and most of the time the buck has been passed to the ruling All Progressives Congress, the APC. But today, the national chairman of the party, Chief John Oyegun, opened up on his party's belief in true federalism and the commitment to restructuring Nigeria only on defined terms. Chief Oyegun says his party will come out with its own position on restructuring, but emphasized that true federalism and devolution of power are being considered. I'm aware that there are several interpretations of restructuring. So is it wrong for one to know what people truly mean? I know what the APC means by restructuring. It's true federalism. It's there in the manifesto. And I have said repeatedly, and I want to repeat it again, the APC stands by its commitment on true federalism. No question about that. True federalism involves devolution. Devolution of some powers, devolution of some resources, with even the possible, it's still a possibility, something to be discussed, uh, federalizing of the Nigeria police force. That is something that was not cast. Uh, we thought it was something worth considering and we put it. Yeah, as uh, such. So our views on that is very clear. It's not a few French groups. We think restructuring means return to the old uh, regions. Which means, some say, restructuring means making the six geopolitical zones the new federating units. Some have even talked of 12. National Chairman of the APC, Chief John Odige Oyego. Meanwhile, the People's Democratic Party has been reacting to the news that the country has exited recession, saying the All Progressives Congress-led federal government is celebrating what does not call for any celebration. The party in a statement today says, quote, We have the firm belief that there's nothing to celebrate until the so-called economic growth improves the harsh living conditions imposed on millions of Nigerians by the Buhari administration's incoherent economic policies and is reflected in a reduction in the high cost of goods, services and staple foods necessary for everyday living." Unquote. Data released by the National Bureau of Statistics yesterday showed that Nigeria exited economic recession after returning to growth in the second quarter of 2017 by posting a 0.55% GDP growth. But the PDP believes that the economic recovery in South Africa, which has also exited recession, offered evidence of the kind of growth that is worth celebrating. For the opposition party, Nigerians will continue to suffer until the inflation rate is brought down and the economy is further strengthened. 
Students of Kafanchan campus of the Kaduna State University, the College of Education Gideon Wire and the School of Nursing, whose schools had been shut since November last year, can now return to school. The Kaduna State Governor, Malam Nasser El Rafai, announced the reopening of the schools for academic activities today. He explains that the closures had become necessary due to the level of insecurity in the areas. <laughs> Youths in southern Kaduna bore the earth preparatory to the mass burial of their friends and family who died in the communal clash between locals and suspected Fulani herdsmen. All that appears to be in their past now. They've since moved on as peace has returned to the community following the deployment of troops. But in spite of that peace, there are still reminders of the woes that came with the crisis, one of them the denial of access to education by the government, which sees that as necessary to protect them against imminent attacks. About eight months after the schools were shot down, Governor Nasir El Rufai is pleased with the security situation in the area and finds no reason to continue to deny students access to tertiary education. We have reviewed the security situation and we think we are comfortable enough now to begin the reopening of tertiary institutions. We called you because we want you to know it is because of you that we are doing this. For the governor in this meeting are representatives of religious and youth groups who see this as good news for their students. We've seen leadership where they are much concerned against all odds in trying to see that education which will give a future to the younger generation is the first priority that is put in place. Tolerance is among the suggestions given here to forestall a repeat of the bloody past. We need peace above every other thing. If there is a conducive atmosphere for things to be run without any interruption, then we can be sure of success. If there were a proper channel of communication, I want to believe that so much of the negative uh, comments and uh, feelings and expressions coming from the minds of people would either not be there or if I told you I would be very, very limited. With this reopening of the tertiary institutions in this part of the state, the call for more security presence around schools becomes louder to ensure that teaching and learning take place in the safest environment possible. When the news of 10 returns, Debt Management Office begins roadshow in Kano for Nigeria's first 100 billion Naira Islamic bond, also known as Sukuk. That will be on the business news. Please join us again.